Today, we're gonna to be diving into one of the hottest topics in health and fitness right now, and that is gonna be the new approaches to intermittent fasting and how they're shaking things up in the world of fat loss and longevity. We all know intermittent fasting, or IF, has been around for a while, but recent research and innovations are taking it to a whole new level. So whether you've just been curious about fasting or you've been doing it for years, this episode is gonna give you really fresh insights uh, in regards to maximizing your results. So what exactly is intermittent fasting? To kick things off, let's recap with what intermittent fasting is. So at its core, it's essentially just an eating pattern when you're gonna cycle between periods of eating and fasting. Some of the most common methods include the 16-8 method where you are fasting for a 16-hour period and then you eat within an eight-hour window. There's also the 5-2 method where you're gonna eat normally for five days and then restrict your calories to around five to 600 or so for those two days. Now, traditionally, intermittent fasting is used for its fat burning potential, improved metabolism, and the powerful process of autophagy where your cells repair and regenerate during fasting. But in the last few years, we've seen some new and exciting approaches that not only boost fat loss, but potentially tap into benefits of longevity through fasting. Um, now, those new approaches to intermittent fasting, what's it look like? What's new in the world? Let's break it down. So, time-restricted feeding with variations. Many people are very familiar with the standard 16-8 approach, but recent research suggests that playing around with your fasting window could offer even better results. Um, for example, experimenting with 14-10 for beginners, 18-6 uh, for those who wanna push their limits a bit further. But here's where it gets interesting. Newer approaches are focusing on aligning your eating and fasting windows with your circadian rhythm. So by syncing your meals with your body's natural biological clock, you can actually enhance fat loss and improve the overall health outcomes. Now, keep in mind that a lot of the fat loss benefits are going to come from this time-restricted eating window, so simply reducing overall calories. Um, that's where a lot of this comes into play. It's less to think about. Now, alternate day fasting with caloric moderations, and traditionally these fasting meant uh, zero calories on fasting days, but new takes on this are gaining popularity, including alternating uh, fasting with caloric modifications, Fasting days can have small controlled intake around 500 calories or so, still triggering the autophagy and the fat loss, which is a bit more sustainable, less extreme, and makes it easier for people to stick with longer term while still, again, focusing on being in a caloric deficit. Now, revisiting the warrior diet, that's where you typically fast for around 20 hours and eat during a four-hour window, it's making a comeback with a twist. Now, the focus is on adjusting meal timing to prioritize protein intake and nutrient-dense foods, the idea here is to maximize fat burning while preserving muscle, which is a critical factor for anyone aiming to lose fat without actually sacrificing lean body mass. Now, the next one is gonna be a fasting mimicking diet, or FMD. It's one of the most exciting innovations in the, uh, in the industry right now. The approach allows you to consume small, nutrient-dense meals over the course of a few days, kind of tricking your body into thinking it's fasting while still getting those essential nutrients. Studies have shown that this diet not only promotes fat loss, but it also helps reduce inflammation, boost cellular repair, enhancing longevity, all without the struggle of a water-only fast. Uh, the insights here, um, basically you're enhancing fat oxidation. Those longer fasting periods like the 18-6, the 24 methods have been shown to significantly increase fat oxidation. This means your body is better able to tap into those fat stores for energy. So when you extend the fasting window, your insulin levels stay low for longer, allowing your body to burn fat more efficiently. Now that kind of leads right into the next one where we're improving insulin sensitivity. One of the reasons fasting works pretty well for fat loss is because it does improve insulin sensitivity. When your, when your body becomes more sensitive to insulin, it's better at managing blood sugar levels and more efficient at burning fat. Now fasting methods focus on stabilizing insulin spikes which is critical for sustained fat loss, especially those with insulin resistance or prediabetes. Now, in regards to preserving muscle mass, this is one major concern, the idea of fasting and losing additional muscle mass. But new strategies have emerged to kind of address this. Um, by cycling protein intake and focusing on nutrition timing, nutrient timing, during those eating windows, it is possible to burn fat while preserving, preserving or even building lean muscle. So if we pair fasting with resistance training on your feeding days, this can further enhance body composition, helping you look leaner while you're losing fat. Now, when it comes to longevity, intermittent fasting is not just about getting lean, it is about living longer and healthier. So here's what the latest research does have to say about longevity. 
Going back to the concept of autophagy of cellular repair, the longer you fast, the more your body kicks into autophagy, which is the process where damaged cells do get repaired and removed. And this has massive implications for longevity as it helps prevent the accumulation of damaged protein and cells that contribute to aging and diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer. Um, extended fasting beyond 16 hours has been shown to enhance the process even more, making fasting a powerful anti-aging tool. Um, now, it should be noted that autophagy does happen anytime you're in a deficit. Fasting may improve that a bit. Mitochondria health, uh, mitochondria being the powerhouses of yourselves, uh, keeping them functioning op optimally, is the key to living longer. New studies are showing that IF does improve mitochondrial efficiency, meaning your cells produce more energy more effectively with less oxidative stress. This can be one reason why fasting is linked to reduced inflammation and better overall health. Now, in regards to brain health, cognitive longevity, another exciting insight is the impact of fasting on the brain, which intermittent fasting has been shown to increase brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, which promotes brain health and neuroplasticity, which means fasting can protect against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and even improve cognitive function as we age. So in regards to practical application, how do you put these new approaches to work for you? And it really all depends on your goals, guys. Uh, if you're just getting started, starting with a 14-10 or a 16-8 in regards to those eating windows may be the best approach just to kind of ease into fasting. If you're more experienced and you want to push fat loss or longevity, try experimenting with an 18-6. You could work it up to a 24. I'm not a big fan of those longer periods without eating. I think you can do just fine with the typical 18-6 or 16-8 because it does replicate um, you know, it does replicate a standard eating pattern, what we should be doing, but make sure that the foods you are consuming are consisting of a balance of protein, carbs, fats, nutrient dense, whole foods. So we're getting the benefits of digesting these nutrients more optimally. Now, IF can have several potential negative impacts on female health, especially when practiced improperly or without considering individual differences. Uh, women's bodies are more sensitive to caloric restrictions and fluctuations to their hormone levels due to their reproductive system. So here's some specific negative impacts that IF may have on female health. Um, the first one, as we just mentioned, it, is going to be hormonal balances. Now, the impact on the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, HPO axis, women's bodies are sensitive to energy intake. So if fasting periods are too long or calorie intake is too low, it can disrupt, disrupt the uh, HPO axis, which regulates reproductive hormones. So this can lead to disrupted menstrual cycles. Um, calorie restriction through fasting can lead to irregular periods or even amenorrhea, which is the absence of periods. This is because the body perceives fasting as a form of stress, which can suppress reproductive function to conserve energy. Now, we can also see reductions in estrogen and progesterone levels. Long periods of fasting can reduce the production of estrogen and progesterone, which are vital for reproductive health bone density, overall mood balance. Um, next, we're focusing on cortisol levels, so we can increase cortisol levels. Fasting can increase and can elevate those levels in the body's stress hormone, um, especially in women. Chronically elevated cortisol can lead to fatigue and burnout. Constant fasting can uh, result in feelings of over, over I'm sorry, of exhaustion and overwhelm. Um, so things to think about. It can also actually lead to higher increases levels of, uh, of fat storage. So high cortisol levels combined with fasting may encourage fat storage, particularly around the midsection, which contradicts the fat loss goals of intermittent fasting. Cortisol related to intermittent fasting, so pay attention to yourself. Elevated cortisol can also negatively impact sleep duration and lead to poor recovery and mental health, which again goes back to physical and mental uh, detriments. Now, going back to the negative consequences of fertility, fasting-induced disruptions in hormones like estrogen, progesterone, luteinizing hormone, uh, those can all affect ovulation and reduce fertility. So with the reduced ovulation, caloric restriction or extended fast fasting may suppress ovulation as the body prioritizes survival over reproduction when it perceives stress or scarcity. Increased risk of infertility. Long-term intermittent fasting in some women could increase the risk of infertility due to chronic hormonal imbalances. This is also going to play a role in bone health. So women, particularly postmenopausal women, need to pay extra attention to their bone health due to the risk of osteoporosis. Fasting can lead to reduced calcium absor absorption. So some research suggests that the excessive fasting can impair calcium absorption, which is crucial for bone health. 
Again, going back to the lowered estrogen levels, it plays a role in maintaining bone density. Uh, fasting disrupts that end estrogen production, which can increase the risk of bone density loss and osteoporosis over time. And disordered eating patterns. Intermittent fasting may trigger or exacerbate disordered eating between, you know, uh, or amongst a lot of women, especially those who are prone to restrictive diets or have a history of eating disorders. Um, restricting, restricting food intake for longer periods can lead to overeating or binge eating during the feeding window, which can continue to contribute to unhealthy relationships with food. Now, preoccupation with food is constantly thinking about fasting periods and when to eat when the window opens, what to eat. Um, it can lead to excessive and obsessive food behaviors and anxiety around eating. Another big one is going to be thyroid function. So the thyroid gland, which regulates metabolism and energy levels, can be sensitive to caloric intake. Intermittent fasting can sometimes reduce the production of thyroid hormones like T3, leading to symptoms of hypothyroidism, uh, low thyroid function. So those warning signs are going to include fatigue, weight gain, cold sensitivity, sluggishness, or, or bla uh, brain fog. And this can obviously have a massive impact on your mood. So women's mood is more closely tied to hormonal balance and fasting can disrupt this equilibrium. Mood swings and irritability, the combination of low blood sugar during fasting periods, along with hormonal fluctuations, can lead to mood swings, anxiety, and irritability. So with that increased risk of irritability, anxiety, and depression, some women, especially those prone to mental health issues, can be those things can be exacerbated by intermittent fasting. Um, just the stress of fasting, what that places on the body, it's a stressor. These are things that we're programming stress into. So there are some benefits, but there are some negative things. And these are some of those that we do have to pay attention to. Um, reduced physical performance is another one. Fasting can impair athletic performance in women, particularly when paired with high intensity training. This is also related to reduced energy levels. Obviously, when we're consuming less and during a fasting period, uh, energy is lower and women may be more uh, sensitive to experience lower energy during workouts when fasting, affecting overall performance, strength, and endurance. Now, slow recovery, again, another part of that. Lack of nutrition during fasting windows may slow down recovery from exercise, leading to longer recovery times and an increased risk of injury. Women also need more sense or tend to be more sensitive to blood sugar fluctuations than men. Extended periods of fasting may lead to hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. Um, some women may experience low blood sugar during long fasts, which can result in dizziness, nausea, headaches, and fatigue. So these are all things we need to pay attention to. We can also see some variations in insulin sensitivity. While, in, uh, while intermittent fasting can improve insulin sensitivity in many people, some women may experience the opposite effect due to the stress that fasting places on their system, making blood sugar management more difficult. So guys, in conclusion, intermittent fasting can offer many health benefits, but women need to approach it with caution due to the complex interaction between fasting, hormones, female physiology. It's essential for women to monitor their bodies and adjust their fasting regimen accordingly. So start with shorter fasting windows, listening to hung hunger signals, uh, being mindful of menstrual cycles, and those things can help mitigate many of those risks just by paying attention, being aware, and, and uh, shifting things around. As with any diet or lifestyle change, women should consider consulting a healthcare provider or nutritionist, especially if they have pre-existing conditions, are pregnant, or are planning to conceive. We're going to wrap it up here, guys. I hope that this was helpful. I know it's a lot to digest, a lot to process, and there's some pros and cons, so things to weigh on both sides. As with any new diet that you're coming into that you want to try, start slow, be consistent, listen to your body, and make the adjustments necessary based on the biofeedback that you're receiving, that you're taking notes on and you're paying attention to. So if you guys like this one, make sure you hit the like button subscribe so you're notified where you're going to keep these coming i'm going to give you guys as many tips around health wellness fitness nutrition those of you following along for the barrett's esophagus journey i'm going to give you guys updates on that as well i actually just had my last surgery yesterday so i'll keep you guys all in the loop on that i appreciate you being here and we will catch you in the next one